Hello everyone, welcome to Divine Day Boo. This is Kathy speaking. Welcome to your September 1st till the 15th, 2019 general and love reading. I am going to be doing the Divine Spread. Thank you all for your support and for those of you that are interested in the astrology part of the reading and the announcements, please wait until the end of the video, that the second part of the video is the announcements and everything that is going on with my channel. Before I start the tarot, just letting you know that I'm launching a brand new website. The address is divinedebut11.com for those of you that are interested in visiting my website and seeing what I have done. I'm very proud of it. Um, and again, I'd like to thank Virgo for all that they do and wish them a happy birthday. It is the time of Virgo. I'd like to thank everyone, not just Virgo, but wishing Virgo many happy returns on their birthday month. I am celebrating my birthday on the 13th of September as well, so it's a very exciting time. We had a new moon last night in Virgo, so perfect time for launching a new website. Um, I just want to thank everyone for all that you do for my channel. And I'm very excited to bring you these September readings. Let's start the tarot. And as I said, for those of you that would like to stick around and listen to the announcements or what cards I'm using, wait till the end of the video. All right. Thank you very much. Hello. Hello, dear Sagittarius. Welcome to Divine Debut. Thank you so much for being here. This is your reading from the 1st to the 15th of September 2019. It's the Divine Spread, as I usually do at the beginning of each month. Let's see what your Karma Dharma position is showing for you and at this time of the year. So please, Spirit, what Karma or Dharma is Sagittarius dealing with at this point in time? What do they need to know? And we've got temperance, which is your ruling planet, Jupiter. Jupiter is in the sign of Sagittarius. It is at home. It is moving direct. This is temperance. And temperance always speaks of healing, balance. This is spirit being here for you. This is obviously a blessing. This is Dharma. This is not a nasty card. This is a wonderful energy. So spirit is here with you, dear Sagittarius. You do have the your ruling planet, Jupiter, moving direct and helping bring things in for you. As we know, Jupiter is the planet of luck and abundance, the planet of expansion and growth. And Jupiter visits Sagittarius once every 12 years. So it's a very special time with Jupiter moving forward. So temperance also speaks of patience. Now, for some of you at this point, I would say from now until Jupiter finishes up in your sign beginning of December, the blessings will still be coming in. So what the cards are saying is be patient. You will be seeing what what spirit is doing for you, what is being worked out on your behalf. So what aid, what help are you receiving from, from above? Very benevolent energy with Jupiter there. Now Jupiter is, you know, it expands on everything it touches. At this time, it's in a little bit of a difficult energy um, it's in a quincunx over to the north node in Cancer, which the why this is happening is that it's asking for some sort of a tweak, something it needs to be tweaked, changed for destiny to show up. Your destiny is the north node in Cancer. Everyone's destiny at this time is the north node in Cancer, the north node of the moon. So something needs to change, something needs to happen for you to be on the right path. Let's take your cards, dear Sagittarius, and see what that is all about. 
it is a very comic time, and I need to tell everyone this, um, that especially with the South Node and Saturn and Pluto and Capricorn, and they are in your second house of earned income, the house of values, the house of work, career, the authorities, and also the way you are seen out in the world, your status. So let's take the divine spread for you. At the base you have the King of Swords, so Aquarius, Gemini or Libra. What is hidden from you is the Nine of, Pent uh, the Nine of Cups, which is a wish card. This is what you can't see. And let's take the recent past and we've got the Page of Cups here, beautiful. In the now position, Three of Pentacles. Okay, crowning your reading and this would be around about career matters to do with the father because Capricorn, the house of Capricorn is the house of the father whereas Cancer is the house of the mother and the, your foundation. So what is playing out has got to do with, you know, with the nodes where they are, Cancer and Capricorn, it's all of got to do with your foundation, your home, your heritage, your lineage, as well as your career, your status, how how do people see you in the world, what is, what is the challenge for you at this time with the Pluto, South Node and Saturn in Capricorn, what challenge are you dealing with? We've got the Three of Wands, okay, that's a very good card to have here. Three of Wands, Three of Pentacles, beautiful. In the action and advice position, you've got temperance again. This is amazing. This is so beautiful, which means that there is something that is being worked out on your behalf. This is a blessing. Two angels are here. I don't know if you believe in angels. I do fully. Um, I've had them visit me in my dreams in my lucid dreams so I am you know my I don't know about you guys if you've got a spirit guide Archangel Michael is my spirit guide and recently I've had a lucid dream where I've seen Archangel Zophiel or Lophiel whichever way I don't know for those of you that recognize those names beautiful beautiful they are present and especially of course if you believe because if you don't believe in what you see well that's like having your eyes closed so you have got blessings here you are being looked over dear Sagittarius beautiful let's see your outcome you've got the hermit which is Virgo beautiful and let's see what's how you are being influenced by the transits by spirit at this time and you have the Empress, that is lovely. The Empress, which is a number three again. You've got three threes. Three threes equal nine. You've also got the Hermit, which is a number nine. Let's see what's at the bottom of the deck. And you have another three. This is incredible. So we're talking now four threes equal twelve. 12 is the hanging man, it's Piscean energy, right? So it's talking about, you know, either sacrifice, there is a necessity for sacrifice or you need to change the way you're looking at things or, you know, the blessings are coming in as long as you've got the patience. There are so many energies here that are talking about patience. From now until beginning of December, I would say that what you're waiting for, of course, there's so many of you out there. What you are hoping to accomplish, what a beautiful reading. This is amazing. It's in the cards. Let's see what's beneath the Three of Cups. And we have the Eight of Pentacles. So your efforts will not go unnoticed. Your hard work will be, it will be, um, rewarded and it's all about collaboration we do have two people here now the eight of pentacles is usually again virgo 
So I'm going to say that a lot of you could be dealing with a Virgo. Sun, moon or rising. Let's see what's beneath. And we've got the King of Cups. And I feel that this is your energy. I feel that, uh, dear Sagittarius, some of you may even be on the cusp with Scorpio. Because the King of Cups, many say, is Scorpio. I also see him as Cancer. Um, we've also got the Page of Cups here, which is Pisces. So let's throw all the water signs in there. We do have, also we've got the Empress, which is Madra Arcana. The Empress is Taurus, as well as Libra. But also Aries, if we're talking fire energy, Aries energy is like, you know, it's like the fool hoping to begin something new. Um, Aries is the warrior. Aries is ruled by Mars. Now Mars is in Virgo. The Virgo energy here, if you are not dealing with a Virgo, which I do believe that Virgo is in your reading here somewhere, why you've got the hermit, but also the empress is the mother of earth. When we talk the mother of earth, because what I see is the queen of pentacles is usually for me Virgo. Many say it's Capricorn, but the queen of pentacles is the minor arcana of the empress. So there are, you know, there are similarities there. Now the empress being in the a uh, helpful position, this is spirit again, if we're talking about just an energy, this is like manifestation and abundance, this is love, anything to do with Venusian things, matters, we always do have the glyph of Venus here, now Venus, Mars, um, the Sun and Mercury are all in Virgo, it is the time of Virgo, so that could be what's influencing your reading here for those of you that are not dealing with a Virgo. Um, and also, a couple of days ago we did have a new moon in Virgo, so that's what this reading could be all about. Something is beginning. You do have the threes, which threes are all about expansion and growth. This is in the now position, three of pentacles, again, to do with work. For those of you that are looking at this reading as a career reading, we've got a lot of success here. Three of Wands. Wands are our vocation. They're our creativity. Also, the Empress. She's got very creative qualities and capabilities. She's very creative. She brings in the abundance. She brings in all the goods. Venus, as we know, can be a project. It can be love. It can be harmony. Venus also rules Libra. And Libra is all about harmony, right? Now, speaking of Libra, we do have the King of Swords here at the base of your reading, which would be an air sign logically because, you know, the King of Swords is someone who is very cerebral, someone who uh, speaks their mind, someone who looks at the facts. This is someone who does not show a lot of emotion here. Um, and many times I'm going to say that because the King of Swords is someone that is very, he's very fair, he, his words can cut sometimes, you know, if this card were to be in the reversed, it would have been someone that is either holding back and not communicating, or it would be someone that is very harsh with their words. But for some reason, I feel as though this is your energy. Now, you may have, you may have um, planets in Libra. Um, I don't have an other air um, energies here. The, also, Virgo, Virgo can also also show up as air because Virgo is ruled by Mercury, and therefore. Virgo is classified as very cerebral, very logical. So there's a lot of air energy with Virgo. So this is either your energy or for some of, for some others of you, it could be your partner and they're showing up as someone who is very calculated, someone who will speak their truth. 
but the truth and this is in the area of foundation home security right I do feel that it, because we've got the Empress here which she is also she's a pregnant woman and she has to wait again we've got patience here dear Sagittarius I know you're a fire sign and you may have difficulty with being patient but all your reading is screaming out patience it's all about timing so I do feel that calculating your situation looking at the facts around your home and your security is and not being too over emotional and being patient I think that that is what uh, what is necessary here but I do feel that with this energy here with the king of swords I would say that you have been like you are showing up as quite cool quite aloof where your home and your security is concerned here now this could also be the king of swords could also be a solicitor could be something like that as well and a doctor because you know both the king of swords and the hermit can be an advisor now the hermit again as I say it's Virgo but it's also a guru it's someone who is very spiritual now Sagittarius you are very spiritual you have you know you are very strong on your beliefs the house of Sagittarius is all about our beliefs it's also a lot to do with foreign places and people higher education it's the divine it's spirit now the hermit and the hangman as I mentioned before they've got a lot of similarities where you know enlightenment has got to do with why because the hermit is holding the lantern whereas the hanging man he has got the halo around his head so it's got a lot to do with connection to spirit I feel that you guys are very connected at this time and I feel that the blessings are coming from the, from spirit for you now what is hidden is the nine of cups and the nine of cups is a wish card it's one cup before the ten which ten of cups is it's the card it's the card of bliss it's the card of happy family happy happiness on an ultimate level we are missing one cup here and it's being it's coming in it's stumbling in why because this page of cups is as you can see he's walking with difficulty it's as though he's holding a cane which means that the message is somehow crippled the apology is somehow crippled which means there are difficulties in having it delivered for some reason so what I'm thinking is that spirit is trying to work out something on your behalf but spirit doesn't only look after one spirit takes care of everyone so all people and situations have got to be in you know in divine order and that's what I think the the um, handicap is at this time now again the three of Pentacles it does show someone that is performing um, you know what they what they have mastered doing what is the right thing um, mastering their craft and being noticed for their efforts okay and we've also got we do have Venus here and that's another very positive sign so Venus can be projects it can be money or it can be anything that you love many of you could now be doing something that you love you could be working on a project that you love doing and it has got a lot of potential because the three of wands is again very Sagittarian you know matters to do with the world at large she is looking across those seas and the three of wands are here she's waiting on those ships that she's actually um, put the effort into manifesting so she's waiting on the return of her hard work 
and what she's been creative with, also what she has put her passion towards, like she's worked towards. And it's only a matter of time here with temperance again that this will manifest. Now the hermit is a number nine, one step before the wheel of fortune, which is Jupiter, which is also a completion. So you're ending the reading with a nine here. Now the empress can be a mother figure, motherly figure. It could be your mother for some of you. For others of you, this could be just someone that's very creative. So your creativity and what you've worked for what you've put love and, you know, a lot of TLC, tender loving care into, she will bring to you as an energy. Now, for others of you, this could be your energy where you are manifesting. You're doing everything that you love. As I said, you've got four threes, which equal 12. Again, 12 adds up to a three. So three is very important for you guys. Number three is very important. Now this could be, of course, for some of you when you watch this video, it could be three days, it could be three weeks. For others of you, it could be three months. Now we are in September, so September, October, November, that's when Jupiter is will be leaving his gifts as he leaves your sign. So looking towards the end of November, and beginning December when you should be receiving for a lot of you. Love that. Let's take a look at the Romance Angels and see what's happening in your love life. Dear Sagittarius, Archangel Michael, what does Sagittarius need to know about love? What do they need to know about September and their love life? Please, Spirit, help guide me for Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, or Rising. Now we know that um, if you have, if you're female, you can look at your Venus. Where is your Venus? You can watch that video. If you are male, you can look at your Mars video. So, Archangel Michael, please guide me. For love, Sagittarius. Wow, codependency. Very interesting. Addictions are affecting your romantic life. Now, the codependency is Capricorn. And Capricorn, again, is where the south node Pluto and Saturn are. Now, I wanted to mention, because this card obviously brings up Saturn, Saturn is actually stopped in the sky right now and he will be moving direct on the 18th of September. He will be covering his shadow phase and I think if I'm not mistaken around December he will be coming out of his shadow phase. So he's covering the area that he covered from January until April. So what was happening for you around that time? Now codependency, as I said, it does speak Capricorn. Capricorn can be career. It can be, some of you could be dealing with someone who's got strong Capricorn. This could be restrictions around your things of value, things that you value. Maybe there is, because with Pluto in your second house of Capricorn, there is transformation happening in that area of your life and that's where it's very karmic. So what I'm thinking is, and I'm just, this is the energies that I'm channeling, once Jupiter moves into Capricorn, Jupiter, which is your ruling planet, moves into Capricorn, he will be, that's going to be Clash of the Titans, like the big players, Jupiter, Capricorn and Pluto in January. Once Jupiter hits that area, it's going to be, as I said, Clash of the Titans, may the strongest win. But I feel that Jupiter, um, being the god of all gods, has got the upper hand. Now it's not going to be easy, but it's going to be very transformative. 
and it's going to be a very interesting time. I think that Jupiter will put things into place. So with the codependency card here, as I've said, it's a very karmic time. So this is around your house of earned income, your house of values, your house of career, the authoritarian, the father, and, you know, authorities, even the law. Okay, so let's take one more card, dear Sagittarius. Not for all of you. It won't be for all of you. Codependency and Saturn do speak, Capricorn, I should say, do speak of very, very hard work. Uh, very busy times, very hard work, doing the right thing for for there to be manifestation. Let's take another card. And we've got heart-to-heart -heart conversations. Honestly discuss your feelings with each other. So heart-to-heart -heart means truth. Okay, so honesty is going to be very important here. Now, with a codependency, someone feels that they are dependent. Maybe you are dealing with someone that is dependent on you. And this could be a bit of a burden. So if this is a burden that you are in, where love is concerned, don't fear because with the energies playing out now, I do feel that with Saturn moving direct, things will um, start to manifest, okay? I do feel that it's been a bit of a energy where everything is stopped. Once Saturn is stopped, his energy is very, very strong. So with the south node there, that's what we're getting rid of. Okay, something that is very familiar, that's like we're excreting the energies, taking them out of our life. Pluto is transforming our life. So have faith in the process. What's at the bottom? We've got love yourself first. Your self-respect makes you more romantically attractive. Now I'm going to say that um, because there are many threes here in your reading, some of you may be dealing with someone that is um, in your business and there is a form of like there are shackles that you are dealing with and this doesn't have to be a, um, it doesn't necessarily have to be a third person in a love triangle, but it, what I feel it is, it's like obligations, it's a weight on your shoulders and this could even be career. This could even be career that you are challenged at this time and you're working very hard. That's what Capricorn does. It's, it's like having someone breathing down your neck. Have you finished, for instance? Are you done with this project? You know, someone is chasing you and you feel like you are in a difficult position here. But heart-to-heart -heart conversations, even though the Romance Angels does speak of romance, it doesn't matter. For those of you that are having the codependency at work, I do feel that the hard work that you are putting in right now is going to manifest for you. You have the Empress and you have the Nine of Cups in the hidden position. So, again, the Hermit is a Nine. Let's take... Um, Let's look at the cards, um, take some more cards, and I'm using another deck here. Okay, I have mentioned all the decks at the bottom in the description box below the video. So let's look at, first of all, the Karma Dharma position. What I do notice in the Temperance card here is the rainbow, okay? And that is a blessing, obviously. Again, the angels. The angels are doing something. Something they are uh, preparing. Something that you are not aware of. Let's take. Let's take two cards on this temperance card. And we've got the six of wands, which is a card of success, recognition. Um, popularity. It is a wands card. So as I have said, whatever you've been working on, again, if we're looking at the wands, which I feel is your energy, 
you have the three and the six again there's a nine here which means that you are tired you're exhausted but you've still got the fight within you there's one more one to go before your burden ends let's take one more card and you've got the ten of cups which is beautiful remember how I was saying that the nine and the one the uh, tenth cup which is coming in slowly usually the page of cups is quite quick energy because we do have the fish which is unexpected but also the water element they usually take two steps forward one step back and especially here there is a handicap in this card so for those of you that are waiting for an offer to complete your happiness it's coming in but it's taking time it's taking its sweet old time let's look at the king of swords and I'm gonna say for those of you that are uh, studying higher education we do have the guru here someone who stays at home and does a lot of study a lot of homework right and the king of swords could be someone who is furthering their studies Sagittarius you are all about higher education you are working very hard it's all about patience there is success ten of cups is here and around your birthday this is like beautiful let's look at that king of swords and we've got the nine of pentacles here again Virgo Virgo is here again nine of Pentacles speaks of being someone who is standing strong independently another nine we have For those of you that are dealing with a Virgo this is someone who is quite financially independent Wow look at that I did say I did speak about Neptune Pisces before this is half turned so I have to take it that a lot of time has passed it's almost time you're halfway there okay your wish is coming through and this is Neptunian energy Neptune and nine of cups I'm going to say there could be one of two one or two of you out there someone has got addictions we've got the nine of cups the ten of cups we've got Neptune here we've got all these cups which can be overindulging this could even be drug abuse someone out there is dealing with someone who's got addictions unfortunately but speaking the truth openly will will bring in the the salvation even with the three of cups here at the bottom of the deck which is the general energy someone could be going out too much drinking too much partying that's what the codependency the devil can mean too much partying as well let's take the so Pisces is obviously present here as well but don't forget that Virgo and Pisces they're on the same axis so if I'm mentioning Pisces it could be the Virgo because Virgo if we say Virgo Sun then they've got Pisces as their seventh house of partnership or the other way around yes so someone's in two minds about coming forth coming forward with an apology or bringing in that offer that ace of cups they're trying to make a decision that's why there is a handicap here there is information that they're waiting to receive because the two of swords she's wearing a blindfold and that's where the handicap is that there is information missing let's look at the three of Pentacles the hermit again Virgo is all over your reading so some of you may be the hermit at this time you are looking at the details and again the hermit could even be an obstetrician we do have a pregnant woman here could even be a teacher the hermit can be a teacher some of you may be um, 
you know, receiving spiritual studies. You may be studying spiritual, um, sp you may be taking on a spiritual path at this time. Let's take the three of wands. And there's the Seven of Cups, which is things are up in the air. And it's also, again, Neptunian. So wondering whether these ships are going to come in. There is some sort of confusion here. Let's not forget, very importantly, that Jupiter in Sag is squaring, is going to square Neptune in Pisces for the third and last time. So this is a spiritual quest. Okay. This is like, as I said, Jupiter expands on everything. Neptune can be confusion, but it can also be spirituality and the divine. It can be unconditional love as well. But squares help bring change. Wherever um, there was a feeling of lack or things were not correct and in the right position, that's what squares are there for to help us move into and onto the right path and right trajectory for our future. Let's take a, a card on the temperance in the action and advice. And there's the Ten of Wands. Remember, I was saying, one more wand and you're at the end. The burden is ending. You can actually see the finish line. You can with that 10. It, the 10s break down to the ace. So some of you could be finishing a project and hoping to begin something else, but it's been quite tough. Let's take the hermit in the outcome position. And we've got justice here. Libra. This is a number 11. You're moving through a new doorway. This is a very karmic time. Um, I want to say karmic justice will be yours. For those of you that have worked really hard, stood in your integrity, you are moving through a new doorway. 11 is that new doorway for me. As this woman, this judge, whoever this is, they're sitting in between those two pillars. And holding up the sword, it's like a ruling is is done in your favor and I feel that for those of you that have been waiting for justice for those of you that are dealing with legalities and a lot of homework a lot of a lot of study maybe you know sometimes the hermit can even be a detective for those of you that are dealing with a third party or someone's been very negative towards you or you know, they've trodden on your toes and you've taken them to court. Whatever the legal issue is here, justice is amazing for you. You do have 10, 10, 10, two tens here. Okay, let's take the Empress. And we've got the Knight of Pentacles. And again, Virgo. It is the time of Virgo. We all have Virgo somewhere in the chart. Now, of course, some of you may have nothing in Virgo, no planets in Virgo. If that is the case, then, of course, you are dealing with someone who's got strong Virgo in their chart. This is slow and steady progress forward. This is someone looking towards the future and hoping this pentacle will go, will take them to the future and will grow. They're you know, they're not moving forward. Usually this knight is the slowest moving. Here he's actually even stopped. He is envisioning his future. Not moving forward unless he is certain. And what the funny thing is, is that, and this has been quite a theme, we've got the Nine of Pentacles and the Ace of Pentacles, which is held there. That will make the Ten. But again, because he stopped in his tracks, he is waiting until it is the right time. He's waiting for that green light to move forward. Yes. Okay, everyone, let's take some Sabilas. I 
I think for those of you that have been dealing with someone who's been quite tough, quite harsh with you, I think that they, even though we don't have the tower here, I do think that with the temperance card being present twice, I think that with all this karmic energy that's going around, they're either going to have a wake-up call, yeah, a wake-up call, and maybe they, they will have second thoughts about why they have been harsh, why they haven't been loving and nurturing because I do feel here with the King of Swords and this could go the other way. The reading can obviously go the other way because we do have the King of Swords here and the, and the Empress, two very different energies. The Queen, the um, Empress is very loving, nurturing. She's absolute, she's love on all levels. The King of Swords, there is no emotion, there is no love shown by the King of Swords. But there has to be a reason for something that happens. There is obviously a reason why this King of Swords is showing up as the King of Swords. Let me take three Sibylas on him. And we've got Legerezza, which is the Ten of Wands. So this is very Plutonian. Transformation. The butterfly, you know, the caterpillar that's turned into the butterfly. Now, this is also very sexual energy here, as well as the codependency. But there is change here. Pluto is present here. There is change in your foundation, in your security. Let's take another card. We have the Belvedere, which is the Three of Cups. So being on the lookout, waiting for those ships to come through. Now, this card also speaks to me of lack of trust. Why? Because she is on the lookout. Now, she is expecting for someone to come in. She's, there could be trust issues here. As I said, she's on the lookout. Let's take, um, she's, maybe she's been waiting for some, for this King of Swords to transform. And once the transformation happens, we have the Three of Cups, which is a celebration. Now, the trust because she's on the lookout and the Three of Cups that is here. Don't forget that Three of Cups can also be the card of gossip, learning, finding out things off the grapevine from other people, information that was hidden. And that's where the trust issues could be and that could be the reason why the King of Swords is showing up as he is. Let's take another card. And here we've got the Two of Cups. So what is coming in is an agreement. This is the Two of Cups. This is security. This is a contract. Even if this is career. This is sturdy, heavy, duty, um, stability. Look at this mansion. Look at this institution, whatever it is. A constitution, whatever this is, this is a contract and an agreement. So that's really funny that we go from the Three of Cups to the Two. So if there has been a third person in the picture, they are falling away. So, justice. Let's look at justice and the hermit. Now, the Six of Wands here in the Karma Dharma position, we all know that that can be a card of pride and vanity. So some of you may be very successful at what you do or you may be dealing with someone else who is quite successful. Let's look at that Justice card with the Hermit. We have Il Namiko. There's no number 11 again. This is the snake that sheds its skin. The enemy is running away. There is transformation and change here. He looks as though he's running away from a situation because he is, he doesn't want to get caught out. Okay. 
what else do we have? We've got Gran Consolazione, which is a grand consolation. This is the most popular, the most abundant card in the Sibylas, very similar to the Seven of Cups, but this man receives everything that he desires, everything that he's been hoping for, he will have. And because it's the Seven of Wands, this is like you sticking to your guns, continuing to work on what you have wanted to manifest. It's showing up here. But the Seven is also help from Divine. And here we've got Nemika, which is the female enemy. We've got the male enemy and the female enemy. But she's wearing, she used to wear a mask, which is coming off. So you will know she is holding a sword, um, I should say a dagger. She's holding a knife. So these could be words, um, conversations that are coming to light. Remember the card here, heart to heart conversations. And you could need to go through a little bit of hardship, could be a tough conversation. And it is a 12 again, it's the hanging man which adds to a three. So three is all about expansion. I would say that the conversation um, will be will be had. The clarity is coming through, but it's going to take a little bit of time. You will know the truth. Everything will be up on the table and shown to you. Now we've got the enemy, the male and the female, which are split between, they're both next to the wish card, right? So they're both, for me, wishing for the same thing. Now, maybe, as I said, a little bit of a hard conversation, but whatever comes to light is going to be a lot of abundance. It's a grand, which is big, a big consolation prize. And what is that going to be, everyone? The Ace of Wands and the Menu, which is a spiritual connection. This is a contract, as I said. Someone is popping the question. There is connection here through spirit. You know, Menu is like the Four of Wands. It's like the marriage card. But there is a lot of fire, passion, creativity. Even if this is career, the connection is here. Again, the contract, it's looking really, really good. Dear Sagittarius, I think you are connected through spirit. The fact that we've got two, the temperance card twice, to me speaks that both people, for both of you, you and the person that you're interested in, or you and the other person, whether this is the another person, could be a sibling, could be any anyone else, a co-worker, you're both needing to be patient. It's being worked out. The offer will be coming through. We've got temperance twice, two cards on each temperance. That's the four. Keep a lookout because the four of cups is, it could be an offer that is missed. Be careful with that. But fours, again, always speak of home, stability, foundation, security, and even the mother even the mother. Now some people say it can be both parents, yes, but it's mainly the mother. Okay, so what I'd like to do now is I will take some handwritten cards, one message. Actually, I'm going to take one on each of the people here. So we've got the King of Swords in your foundation. You know for yourself who this is in your life. And we've got the Empress, which is in the divine position. Let's take one message for each and see. You will know. Now, if it does not resonate for you, it means it's not your reading. Okay. We do have the Love Yourself first here. Oh, I forgot to take one card on the Three of Cups, which is the general energy here. Let me take one card on that. Three of Cups, and we've got the Six of Swords. So moving away from hardship 
to calmer waters, moving away and finding your balance. This can be literal movement, you know, over water, across the seas. I do see a fair bit of Neptunian energy, Pisces. It's all water. Neptune is all water, right? Ooh, way too much, way too much. But I need to show you this card. The Two of Cups fell right on top of the King of Swords. And we've also got, I'm just going to tell you the cards that I can see. We have the Ace of Cups, which says, let's elope. Let's try again. I love you. So the let's try again obviously means that there is a reunion, the potential for that. And we have, I am now awakened. Now I see clearly you are the one for me. Wow. With the Seven of Cups. That's all for the King of Swords. Let's put the rest of the cards. I didn't see the other cards. Let's look at the Empress and what she's got to say. So the King of Swords got three cards. That's what Spirit wanted me to do. Those cards were open for me and they were all positive. Let's look at the Empress. Oh, wow. This was already opened. I dreamt of you before I met you and this is the Four of Wands. love is in the air everyone I would like to take an angel answer if you would like pause the video I'm going to shuffle a couple of times dear spirit can you please answer a question that my Sag Sagittarian friends need answered please Archangel Michael one card for Sagittarius one card what do they need to know and I feel that it's this one and we have ask your angels <laughs> oh well okay well not very enlightening is it ask your angels and your angels are obviously very present here so let's read the book your angels are always with you and it's so funny because I've said this so much. However, you must ask for their assistance in order for them to provide you with the help you're seeking because heaven respects your free will choices. State your questions to your angels clearly. You can do so either out loud or silently in your own mind. Your angels will instantly help you according to God's will. Your angels may also have special messages for you about the situation you're asking about. Sit quietly in a peaceful place, indoors or out in nature, and ask for advice and guidance. Notice what messages come to you. It's possible the answers will come to you through your feelings, hearing or sight, or perhaps you will just know the answer. You can also ask the angels for signs during the day to guide you onto the right path. Well, I love that. I love that for you, dear Sagittarius. Wow. I'm done, dumbfounded with your reading. This was one of the most amazing readings. I absolutely love it. And um, I think that I will leave your reading there. Um, I did have... I did have a, um, I'm just having second thoughts when, whether I should tell you this or not, but I did have a vision today whilst I was sitting outside and I was looking at the electrical poles on the, um, which I was sitting, it's a beautiful day outside in Sydney today and I was sitting outside for a bit and on the right side was the electrical pole which I sort of, you know, from the, from looking forward, I could see from my right eye that 
it looked like something was up on the pole like uh, it looked to me literally like just like when Jesus was crucified on the cross um, and it just looks so amazing just like when Jesus was up on the cross and I had to look twice so I had to look again and again um, and that was for me that was a sign it was a sign that says that there is a lot of suffering at this time but we need to keep the faith that what the sacrifices that have been made for humanity um, don't go unnoticed and um, that's the message that I got from that and I didn't actually see it on my own I was sitting with my mum and she actually I told her to look there and she said that she could see it as well so I'm not going crazy yet and I thought that it was just something that I wanted to share with you why because ask your angels the angels are here the hanging man does remind me of that as well so darlings they are your messages I'd love to hear your comments sending you lots of blessings and lots of love to all of you whenever we come from a place of love giving love out will bring love back so keep that in mind doesn't matter how hard the situation is always try and be on the side of love okay so again my love to all of you for those of you that want to stay and watch the video of astrology like the extended after this bit here stay on and listen to the announcements as well as the astrology for this time love you all so much bye bye all right everyone thank you for sticking around if you, you're obviously here because you wanted to hear some announcements from me as I was saying in the beginning of the video I'm very proud of my new website very happy to have um, completed it it will be launched on Monday we just had a new moon in Virgo just last night so the website is going to be up and running in the next one or two days so very excited about that also I'd like to add that I will be doing extended readings which uh, will be posted the link will be on my website so for those of you that are interested in the extended readings um, you go onto my website and click the tab on the right hand corner at the top which says extended readings um, it's not guaranteed that these readings here will have extended readings but the next ones will and you can actually purchase that from my website and this is because many people don't like the extra lengthy uh, videos uh, people want an all-round quick um, view at the cards and what they're all about so for those of you that love the extended readings if the reading resonates for you then then if you're interested you've got the option to go to my extended reading tab on my website to purchase the rest of the reading and again I'd like to thank everyone um, for their support and just letting you know it's an honor for me to read for you and I really appreciate all of you here I just like to mention a couple of things about the astrology now for September okay what there isn't that much that is um, very big in September what I'd like to say the most important transits and because this is the astrology part from the first to the 15th um, what is important is that there is a full moon on September 14th uh, which is in Pisces and if you are a Virgo then this is your seventh house of partnership and relationship romantic or otherwise it's you know the seventh house is other people so Pisces is all about unconditional love and Pisces of course is a completion point because Pisces is the last zodiac uh, the last um, sign of the zodiac so full moons are all also completions and when we've got a full moon there is more illumination because we have the reflection of the Sun's rays onto the moon 
So that's why we do, usually do things on a full moon. You know, even the people, council workers that work on the road, they work usually on full moons because there's more light. So obviously something is coming to light, something to do with Piscean energy. For those of you that know your natal chart, then you would know um, the house of Pisces and what it's all about for you. But the main thing is, is that this is a full moon, okay? So it's a culmination. Once a full moon happens, after that we've got another new moon, which we start something, you know? And the full moon, um, sorry, the new moon will be taking place on the 28th of September in Libra, okay? Now, also on the same day, Mercury will be entering Libra. Mercury rules Gemini as well as Virgo. Now, Mercury is all about communication. Libra is all about democracy and finding the balance. So it's a very, very good, uh, the energy is very good for conversations, for communication and finding the right balance, you know, trying to have everything working where communication is concerned. So Mercury is the messenger, so some of us may be receiving messages in relation to partnership or any relationships. Okay, so Libra is all about communication as well, so a lot of that will be going on. Now on the same day again, on the 14th, Venus enters Libra as well. And we all know that Venus is love, money, values, projects. Okay, so Venus is actually the ruler of Libra. So that's very positive. Venus is very strong in Libra. So having Mercury and Venus both ingressing into Libra on the 14th, it's a big day. So mark that on your calendar. There's going to be a lot of communication with a full moon completion of a cycle okay very interesting on that day so just one more thing I won't be um, talking about all the transits for September as I said up to the 15th but what I'd like to uh, point out is that Saturn in Capricorn in its rulership of Capricorn it's actually turning direct on the 18th of September so for those of you that are feeling that things have stopped time has stopped just so you know Saturn is actually stopped right now in the sky Saturn is very potent its energy is very strong that's what happens when a planet stops moving retrograde and then stops and it gets ready to move direct Saturn though will still be in its um, retrograde zone until the 24th of December. So I want to ask you and in your own personal life, what hap what was happening for you from the 22nd of January 2019 until the 29th of April 2019? Because that was when Saturn started to um, move into its shadow zone. So it looks as though those things, those matters, whatever you were dealing with on those from January 22nd till 29th of April, that's the area that Saturn will be covering from the 18th of September until the 24th of December 2019, when it will actually leave its retrograde zone. It still will be turning direct. It will be covering its shadow zone. So that's what I wanted to tell you in relation to Saturn and what's happening with Saturn right now. And we all know that Saturn can be quite hard. Saturn is the lord of karma and, and of time. So as I was saying before, if you feel as though time has stopped, Saturn right now is saying that the right time will be when Saturn says it will be. So after the 18th of September, we will see a big change with things starting to happen, things starting to move. Now, Saturn can also bring us the goods. If we've done the work, 
Saturn will crystallize, will physically bring in the abundance, physically bring in the gifts. So it's not all bad and not all nasty with Saturn. But I'd like to also say, because I talk with a lot of people and I know that a lot is going on at this time. It's a very, very calming time. Why? Because we have Saturn, Pluto and the South Node. Saturn, Pluto and the South Node in Capricorn. Saturn is stopped in the sky. Um, Pluto is still retrograde. He won't be moving direct until beginning of October. So we're dealing with a lot of karmic issues right now. And this, of course, is because Saturn and Pluto are right there with the South Node. The North Node is right opposite in Cancer. So we have Capricorn and Cancer. The South Node, North Node is in Cancer. We also have Pluto and Saturn up here. So they're right across. This is an opposition with the nodes. Pluto and Saturn are activated by the axis. This axis is what is bringing us all this karma. Saturn is the Lord of Karma, as I've said, the Lord of Time. Pluto is very karmic. So is the South Node. This is why we are dealing with a lot of karmic issues right now. So just keep that in mind. Whatever you're going through right now, and I know it's very tough times, it's really hard. We've either got it's black or white. There's no in between. There's no medium. There are no shades of gray right now. It's either one minute it's doomsday and the next it's like heaven. Okay? You will notice that that's the energies we're working through right now and it hasn't been easy for a lot of people. Also, another very important thing is that Uranus in the sign of Taurus is Uranus in the sign of Taurus here is trining over, trines are very positive to all the stellium of planets in Virgo. So Uranus is the rebellion. It's the rebel. It's the change. It's the revolutionary. It's the humanitarian. It rules Aquarius. But it's in the sign of Taurus, which speaks of values, comforts, the five senses. If we're not valuing someone or something, some situation, then Uranus will break things down and bring change. Uranus is also the future. It is trining over to all those planets. At this time, I'm doing your video, we've got the Moon, Venus, Mars, the Sun and Mercury all in Virgo. Virgo is all about our daily routine, it's our health. Virgo is also looking at the details, doing your homework, rolling up those sleeves, being, you know, looking at all the flaws. That's the shadow side of Virgo. But Virgo is also an earth sign. It's very grounding. So is Taurus. So trine, the trine from Uranus to all those planets in Virgo is very positive. So radical change where love is concerned, where communication is concerned, where our daily routine, our health is concerned, our emotions, even the moon is there as I'm doing these videos. And we've also got a major earth trine, earth, grand earth trine, which what, what a grand earth trine is that we've got Saturn and Capricorn and the South Node trining over to all the stellium, all the planets in Virgo and Uranus in Taurus. We have a grand earth trine and trines are very positive. They're very easy flowing earth energy. So that is very positive and it's, that's, you know, the positive sign, uh, side of things. But we've also got, we've also got Jupiter in Sagittarius, which is squaring and squares are not very 
easy. Squares are like turning a corner. So Jupiter is also going to square all the planets in Virgo. Now Jupiter has got to do with the visionary, expansion, growth, legalities, higher education, spirituality, all those things in Sagittarius, which is very free-spirited. Sag and Jupiter. Jupiter is very strong in Sagittarius. It's his rulership. It's squaring all those planets in Virgo. So it's like, for me, it's like a wake-up call. Hello, look at the future. Be You're on a spiritual quest. Also, um, Jupiter is squaring over to Neptune in Pisces. And then Neptune is opposing all the planets in Virgo. So we've got a T-square as well, which is the hard energy. So we've got a mixed bag of goodies. Neptune is it's in his rulership of Pisces. Jupiter is in its rulership of uh, Sagittarius. Saturn is in its rulership of Capricorn. <laughs> Now, Mercury, even Mercury is in its rulership of Virgo. So there is a lot of potent energies happening at this time. Lots of good, some bad, but we've got to take the good with the bad and just keep our head held high and keep working. Okay, so it is interesting in the stars, the what's going on right now. I'm wishing you all the best. Um, that's my, that's the information that I can give you. I can't make these videos any longer. Um, they're already long enough. Thank you so much, everybody, for sticking around. Thank you for your support, sending you lots of love, and I will talk to you very soon. Bye-bye.